Good morning. Welcome to Longmeadow Church of the Brethren um, on this Labor Day weekend, our last hoorah for this summer. Um, pray that everybody's safe out there, a lot of people traveling, and uh, we're just glad that you've joined us today. Um, today we're going to do a, a scripture that's very uh, familiar um, to most everybody, I think, well, people who are Christians, maybe non-Christians, but the fruits of the Spirit, um, if we exhibit the fruits of the Spirit, if everybody would do that, our world would be in such a wonderful place. So um, let's just read what they are and then talk about how God uses the fruits of the Spirit in us to bless others. Um, so the first part of the scripture is going to be Galatians 5, and it starts at verse 22 and it ends at 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do pray that you bless this word, bless the... Uh, the word of God to our hearts, help us to see new truths, even though they're things that we've heard before. But in this world of trouble and, and uh, chaos, we need to hold on to these beautiful truths and promises from the Bible. We thank you, Lord, for the word. We pray that it will come forth as you desire it to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, I just, I thought about this for a long time, and I, I knew today would be coming, and I figured it might be my turn. So, anyhow, uh, studying the fruits of the Spirit is a beautiful thing, because it took me into some nice uh, thoughts that maybe I hadn't taken time to think about what the fruits of the Spirit really are. And that's how people read the Bible. They look at you and they want to see God, they want to see something better. If they're going to come and join us, they need to know that what we've got is worth serving, and we know that God has the answers to everything, every problem that we could have. And the first um, fruit of the Spirit is love. And we know that love is behind everything. And, and you know, Jesus told us, to love him first and our neighbors as ourselves. So, you know, if you really love somebody, you're going to treat them pretty well. And we need to, uh, in this culture, there are a lot of people, maybe we are unloving at times. And it's hard to be loving with people. But Jesus never... You know, all the things that he went through and all of the things that he suffered, the only time that he really lashed out was there in the temple when they were changing money in the temple, and he got angry. But you don't hear him saying, hey, you back there, pay attention. You know, you don't, you don't see any things like references to things where he got aggravated. He got tired, and he always had compassion on those who were not, you know, doing well. So we know that love is the greatest of all virtues. And uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, we have the love chapter. And I'm not going to read the entire chapter, but I'm going to read a good portion of it. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass and as a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and have, though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains 
and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not, and is not, does not vaunt itself, and is not puffed up. I'm going to stop there just for a second because it always reminds me. Back in the college days, we used to have a, a TV in like a common room where we could not, today it's so different. You know, it was horse and buggy like when I went. And we'd all get together in this room and watch TV. Well, I don't know if you remember, but, it, and this was in the 60s, so figure. Johnny Carson had Tiny Tim and his wife to be they got married on the I don't know if any of you saw that but you know there's tiny Tim <laughs> tiptoeing through the tulips and everything and they had this scripture read and there were other girls there you know we were all sitting here watching this and, and when they got to that part where it says is not puffed up they all laughed I think they thought somebody made it up you know, I don't think they realized that that was actually part of the scripture. And I remember going back to the dorm and looking it up. Yep, that's exactly what it said. Because I didn't realize either that that was the term. But, you know, God does not like pride. So charity is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity but rejoiceth in the truth, bears, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and prophesy in part. And then the last scripture, and we'll, we'll skip that little thing about being a child, whatever. 13 says, and now abideth faith, hope, and charity, these things, but the greatest of these is charity. And we know that charity is another word for love. Love is the greatest thing. You know, God, you know, I can't, you know, we can't comprehend the love of God. We can try as we, you know, but we're human. And people irritate you. I don't know if you have anybody in your life that are, you know, it's hard to deal with some people. But we have to love them. I don't think it says anywhere we have to like them. Because <laughs> you don't maybe like to be around them or something. But we don't treat them badly because maybe we don't like their personality or something like that. And uh, not everybody's lovable, you know. And we probably have all had our times where we weren't lovable. But God loves us no matter what. He wants us to be in his kingdom. He sent Jesus to die on that cross, that horrible death. And, you know, if that doesn't show you the love of God, what, what would, you know? And we know a lot of people have been deceived and they don't believe that the word of God is the word of God. We, they don't believe that Jesus was a savior. They think he was just a man in history. Some people think he's a fictional character. They just, you know, they don't get it. And until the Spirit of God opens your heart to see that, you don't see it, okay? So, that being said, we need to love God first and love each other. Love your neighbor as yourself. Um, the next different fruit of the spirit is joy and this is another big one joy is so important and it doesn't mean that you're happy ha 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 all the time it doesn't mean that when you, it has to be a good thing going on for you to be happy we need to have that joy deep down when everything's falling apart and everything's going wrong and we think oh my, you know, what am I doing wrong? And sometimes we do bring things on. It says here, joy is an inward hope and exuberance in spite of outward circumstances. 
So, you know, we can have the joy of the Lord in our hearts when everything around us is falling apart because we have that hope in Christ. If we are born again and we have Jesus in our hearts and we know that no matter what they do to us physically in this life, the only thing that we need to fear is the one who can destroy your soul. And we know who that is. So we have to fight against principalities and power, we, the things that are going on. We fight against so many evil things in this world. We pray that everybody would be strong. And when we're going through those times, you pull on that joy. Next one is peace. This is another big one. We um, see that peace in this world, there's a lot of unrest. We know over in the Gaza Strip, they're still fighting. And we just pray for the peace of Jerusalem and the peace over there. Um, the people would not have to die for people's political agendas, you know, and that's where it comes down to. And we just pray for those people. And in Philippians uh, 4, 7, it says, The peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your minds and hearts. Got my little note here. And minds through Jesus Christ. So, you know, people can't understand the peace in our hearts because they, if they don't have the Spirit of God in their life, they cannot experience it. And uh, I heard David Jeremiah this morning, you know, he said, you know, a lot of people um, say they've accepted Christ, they're Christians, but there's no change in their heart, in their life. You know, you can't go around doing the, all the old things, you know, like it says the old man is passed away and all things are new. You can't continue in sin and be a Christian. You're not going to be perfect. None of us are ever perfect, no matter how long we pray, no matter how many times we read the Bible through. None of us are ever going to be perfect. But he expects us to strive for that perfection. And that's where we come with um, keeping the peace. Now you think about these fruits of the Spirit, how they minister to us in times that are not good. And then we come up to long-suffering. And this, this it says the quiet willingness to accept irritating or painful situations. And I looked up a few things about this thorn in the flesh, and I'll read the scripture, and then we'll talk about some of the things I found out about this thorn that Paul have, had. Do you know, do you have a thorn? in your flesh, you know, do we? We could, and you're going to find out why if you do. Okay, in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10, it says, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, three times, that it might depart from me. And listen to what Jesus said to him. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches and necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And don't forget, because we all, I, I don't know about you, but I know with myself, I think, man, I'm not a very strong Christian. I let, let things get me down. And I think that's our humanness coming through. Like I say, if we were perfect, we wouldn't be here. So 
if you want to stay on earth, not that we could ever, no matter what we do to be perfect, we could never do that. But God gave him this thorn in the flesh. And I even Googled, and I'm real proud of myself, I've learned how to do that. So I'll brag a little bit. I actually called, you know, I speak into mine. I've learned to do that. I'm really advancing. Anyway, and it said that because of it saying in the flesh, it was a physical thing. And in our life, I think we can have thorns in the flesh, but thorns in the spirit. Now, it doesn't say that, but sometimes you have something that you have to put up with all the time. Some people are in pain every day. And there's Paul, he's saying, you know, man, I want to get rid of this thing. It's bothering me. I want to get rid of it. But God said that he was going to use that, number one, to keep him from exalting himself and to be up here when he needs to be down here. He doesn't want us to be prideful or anything like that in ourselves. We can have confidence in Jesus and we can brag, so to speak, of what he has done in our life. But for us to take credit, it's like that song, to God be the glory. When you, when you do something, you do it unto the Lord. Whatever you do in this life, you don't do it to make yourself look good. Say, well, you know, I gave $100 to that poor guy on the street. He didn't have anything to eat, and I'm wonderful because, you know, I gave him money, you know. And you pat yourself on the back. God doesn't want that. He wants us to trust him to take care of us. That's his thing. And then it said that because... You become weak, he can show his strength. But that's where he comes in and takes that weakness and makes it strong. So I think that's beautiful. I think, you know, God has looked into everything in our life. There's nothing in our life that he can't fix if we let him. If we let him, we really ask and, and believe that he will. The next uh, thing is gentleness which is also kindness. Some of these have synonyms that match with it. Generosity and consideration toward others. And that's pretty obvious. You need to be gentle. We need to treat each other kindly. We need to be salt in the earth. We need to season the things around us and make them good. And the... Um, little thing that I found about that. You know, when it's very easy to um, be angry and to be hard on people that are around us. But in Proverbs 15, 1, it says, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but the grievous words stir up anger. And, you know, if you have a problem with somebody and you jump on them, they're going to jump right back. So we need to approach them like Jesus would. Je Jesus would not walk up to somebody and say, well, you don't know the Lord, so you don't deserve anything, or that you, you, know, you need to get right with God, and blah, blah, blah. You know, he didn't do that. So a soft answer would bring about peace. Uh, the next one is goodness, and that's kind of like a, a very uh, easy one to figure, too. Moral excellence, but the word excellence is kind of scary because I don't know if any of us are excellent in our morals. Hopefully we are, but um, you need to be good. You need to be able to, that people don't point to you and say, well, that person's not living the life. We need to live as Jesus asked us to live with all of these good qualities. And a lot of people look at us and they say, well, if that's a Christian, I'd like to be one. Or do they look at us and say, hmm, and I've heard people say this about people. Well, if that's a Christian, I don't want to be one. I don't want to be a Christian if that's the way they are. We're supposed to be different because of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. Faithfulness, enduring loyalty, and trustworthiness. Now, we know that God is so faithful to us. He gives us each day. He gives us food to eat. He gives us a place to live. 
And why some people don't have that in their lives, I don't know. But God has a mission for each one of us. He has a plan. Now, if we don't get into the plan and ask him for his guidance and direction in our lives, he's not going to push in on us. I love that old picture of Jesus standing at the door, and he's knocking, you know. And on that door, there is no handle on the outside of that door. And it can only be opened from the inside. So we have control of that. He gave us free will. He's not going to push in. I heard a preacher say one time, Jesus is a gentleman. He's not going to force his way into your life. So, the next fruit of the Spirit is gentleness and meekness. Depends on what uh, Bible you use. Sometimes in the old King James it says meekness and in some of these others it says gentleness. The power to control your reactions to difficult people and situations. Not to be confused with weakness. And that's like goes along with the other one that we were talking about, about being kind to people. If you handle things in a good way, you can maybe sway someone. But if you become as angry and uh, as evil in a way as they are, you're not going to make any headway. So we need to keep that as um, the soft answer, again, can go for that, turn away wrath. So we need to do that. And it's easy. You know, you go through the drive through at McDonald's and, and you ask for something and they don't give it to you. So you pull away, and if, if you're lucky enough to look in the bag before and realize you don't have it, then you go back and say, um, you didn't give me that cheeseburger that I, you know, and we can come off pretty mean, and I'm sure they deal with everything, you know, these drive through people. I think about that. I think that would be a hard job because you're going to get people who are so nasty and so picky that nothing you do is going to be good, right? So, and then you have good people too, but we need to be the good people. <laughs> we need to be kind. We need to be gentle. When something doesn't go our way, take a little time and pray about it. So, and the last one is self-control. The ability to restrain inappropriate passions and appetites. Um, when Jesus, this is one, I, I never thought about this as being... Uh, having to be temperate in this area, and that's the word that we see, temperance. Um, you know, when Jesus was on that cross, he didn't have to do that. And he could have said, you know, Father, please send your angels, you know, and they even chided him with that. Why don't you call somebody, you know, call down angels, blah, 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 and you hear people say, why didn't he do that? Because he loved us that much. But, he could have, but he had the self-control. It's like going into a buffet and wanting to have a great big plate piled high with chicken and all the good things that we like to eat and the desserts, and, and we all like to enjoy that. And um, so we need to have self-control. We need to, you know, you've heard, you know, t and temperance in all things is very, very important. And um, in your time that you spend the time, the, the money you spend, the food that you eat. We just need, if we do things in moderation is another word for that. So we need to do that. So the prayer that kept coming to me, um, of course, the serenity prayer. I think that almost every day I think of a situation and I'm thinking, we really need to pray that serenity prayer. And, you know, it's, Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And God doesn't expect us to make every perfect decision. But if we do ask him, he will help us make the right decision. And I have another portion of scripture that I wanted to read, Second Peter and one, one through eight. 
always think Peter's back farther than it is. I even put notes, I put little papers in here and I still mess up. So. There he is. It's, far, it's always back farther than I think. Okay, so Second Peter chapter 1, 1 through 8. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have out, uh, obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according to as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, here's the word again, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. He invites you in. He wants you to live by faith. He wants us to live by his will and to ask for his will to be done in our lives. And like I say, he can take care of any problem we have. If we're at not having peace, some people, my neighbor was sitting out today when I come to church, she's often out there on the porch and I said, how are you? She said, well, I didn't sleep very well last night. And so many people have trouble sleeping and having peace at night. And, uh, I really believe if we read the word and, and pray that he will give us that peace. He can do it if we believe it. So let's believe his word and his promises. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I do pray that we have gleaned something out of your word today that would be encouraging, knowing that you're always there. We know that you will never fail. We know charity is love and you are love. We just thank you, Lord, that you pro provided such a wonderful guide in the Bible that we can look and search and seek out your will for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.